What is going on guys, it's Modern Warfare here and welcome back to another PC video. So once again, I'm doing a video on building a computer. I don't get to do this very often, only when I'm actually building a computer for myself. So it's not that often that I get to do this, so whenever I do get to do this, I like to make a video on it, something to put on the channel. So the idea behind this build is that it's going to be a black and white themed build. I've already kind of started the whole black and white themed build in my computer um, as I was kind of just just through upgrades that I've done to it in the past uh, with white LED fans and trying to get a graphics card that has a white logo that lights up. Just trying to, I'm going to try and keep with that theme, make a kind of black and white theme build, try and make it look very neat. I'm not actually completely doing a brand new build. The case is going to be the same. The storage, the storage, the hard drives, the um, the SSD and the, the graphics card are going to be the same. But because I'm replacing the CPU, the motherboard, the RAM and the power supply, I mean, when you replace the power supply and the motherboard, you basically have to rebuild the entire computer from scratch. So first of all, we've got the RAM. Now this is Corsair Vengeance LPX, uh, 32 gigs of RAM. That's four uh, eight gigabyte sticks of RAM. Um, and they've got the white uh, heat spreaders on them as well to go with the black and white build. And it runs at 3200 megahertz, which is insanely fast. That's double the speed of the RAM that I've got in my system right now, which is pretty insane. So for the motherboard, Oops, here we go. So the motherboard is an X99A2. Now I've gone with a Broadwell E build because um, I just wanted a more powerful CPU. The best Skylake CPU I could really see was the um, i7-6700K, which was a, a four core, eight threaded CPU. Didn't feel like much of an upgrade from my i5, which is a four core, four threaded CPU. Um, so I, I wanted to go with a proper upgrade on the CPU, especially if I'm going to be using this CPU for the next four or five years Then I want it to be a beast of a CPU So I went for Broadwell E X99A2 instead of a Z170 with, a, with an i7-6700K So that I could basically get the 6800K Which is a 6 core 12 threaded CPU, which is a huge upgrade from the CPU that I have in my system right now. So let's get rid of this box. Okay, so for the cooler, I've gone with a H115i, which is a all-in-one liquid cooling unit, basically for the same reason, just for um, the looks of it, basically. Um, to have the Corsair logo light up white would look pretty cool, I thought, with the black and white build. Kind of fits. I think it would look better than an air cooler. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the reason. Um, H115i, it's basically like the larger radiator version of the H100i. And then to go with it, I've also got a couple of LED fans for the radiator. These are Corsair's newer um, LED fans, where the light actually comes from the spindle in the middle, rather than from the corners, like their old LED fans. They're also four pin PWM, so they can be controlled depending on the temperature of the CPU. And they can, they're also optimized for high pressure as well, so they should work well with radiators. So that is basically that. Um, other than that, we've also got the power supply, which is a EVGA Supernova 750 watt G2. Um, I didn't do much research on this, so I hope it has all the, the cables I need for the motherboard. So yeah, 750 watt G2. It's a fully modular power supply, so we'll hopefully get some neater cable management out of this thing than the previous power supply I have in the system right now. And then also um, some custom sleeve cables from Cable Mod to make it look just so that's just to add that finishing touch. Um, so that's black and white sleeved cables, which again should go really well. So yeah, that is basically everything that I am going to be putting into this system. First thing I have to do though is take everything apart and get rid of all the old stuff. So yeah, I'll just probably time lapse that while I get rid of um, all the stuff that's currently in the system.
Okay, so I've got the motherboard right here. So we've finished um, opening up the case, took all the stuff out of it, cleaned out all the dust. Well, not all the dust, but as much of the dust as I'm going to get off it at the moment. Okay, so got a bunch of cables under here as well. IO shield, a little CPU socket cover, and then we've got uh, an SLI bridge. Well, there's the LED connectors. Now that's interesting actually because my LEDs um, that I've been using, obviously my old 2012 motherboard never had RGB uh, headers on the motherboard. So this is the, the little IR receiver box that plugs into the LEDs so you can control it with a little remote. And then it plugged into this plug, which I then kind of jerry-rigged, soldered it up to a Molex connector and plugged that into the power supply which worked really well, you know, the LEDs would turn on when you turn the computer on, they would turn off when you turned off the computer, and you can control them with a little remote, but if I can connect them up to this LED connector, I can actually control them with the computer software itself, which would be pretty interesting if we could do that. Um, and then we've also got a bunch of SATA cables. Now I'll just use the motherboard box so that I can assemble the CPU and the RAM on top of the box. There she is. That should do. So I'll take take these covers off. Right now we can just start. Uh, we can start building this or assembling this. I am planning to overclock this CPU, obviously, hence the motherboard and the um, and the fact that it's the K series, so it's unlocked and I can overclock it. Okay, so that is quite a large CPU compared to uh, my previous one. I always lay out my videos as if it's a tutorial, it's just force of habit. I mean really, I mean you're, there's better people to, to follow a tutorial on for computer building than me, that's for sure. So just lift these retention arms off, like that. So we can just open the CPU socket up here. And the way CPUs install generally, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. You've got a little arrow in the corner there, and then there'll also be a little arrow on this CPU somewhere, a little gold one right there. So that's how you know to match it up, just like that. So much precision engineering and try not to drop it kind of thing. So yeah, you just place the CPU on, yeah, there you go. So you put it down and then uh, that just comes off, the little plate comes off and you've got your CPU attached, nice and secure. Okay, so that's the CPU. Next, we've got to install the RAM. The CPU cooler will go on. Normally, if it was an air cooler, an air cooler I would install it now. I'd put the air, well, I'd put the RAM in first, then I'd put the air cooler on. Um, but because it's a liquid cooler, I need to install it once it's in the case. So RAM next basically and I'll just install the RAM now but obviously again I've never installed a liquid cooler before so if the RAM obstructs anything I might have to take the RAM out um, to get the liquid cooler on and then put the RAM back on afterwards. So here it is, that's our 8 gigabytes each so that's 32 gigs in total. Okay so RAM installation is very simple. It is just get the RAM, slot it in straight down, obviously move this little retention uh, clip open and then you just, this one's a bit stiff but you just kind of push it down, close the retention clip on, make sure it's firmly slotted in and then that's RAM, simple as that so just got to do the same with the next one. So that should be our RAM all installed there. Looking pretty nice actually. I'm very, I'm pleasantly surprised at how good the RAM looks. The black and white build there. Looks very nice. Okay, so that is, that is the motherboard ready to go in the case. So I'll bring back up the case and we'll plug the motherboard in, get it all screwed down. Okay, so now we come to installing the motherboard first of all. Got to put the I.O. shield on. Okay, so I.O. shield. Now, this could be a little difficult because I've got a fan under here. 
All right, okay, so installing the board should just go in like this. Just had a horrible thought there. What if that X99 shield did not fit under the fan? That would have been a disaster. But it looks like we're good. Just gotta kind of line it up. Okay, so that appears to be the motherboard installed right there. All I have to do is screw it down. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna plug these in before I put them in the case, just because um, when it comes to actually putting them in the case, I've got a feeling that it might obstruct it and be quite difficult to plug them in once they're, they're already in the case. So I'm gonna put these in beforehand so we don't have to worry too much about that. Plug those in. So that's our power for, for the main system. Okay, so here's our power supply, fully modular. I've got the power cables already connected. These are the black and white sleeve cables from Cable Mod on our power supply. So yeah, I'm just gonna attach it right here with all this. I was thinking of plugging everything in first, then putting it in, but then um, it's gonna be a complete mess trying to route all these cables. So I'm just gonna do it one by one, but I've just already pre-attached the, the main power cable. So yeah, basic way this installs, just in here like this. Not too much of a tight squeeze, got plenty of space. And then yeah, oops, lined up. Yeah, then you just line it up, screw it in. So I'm just gonna put in the screws and then route all these, plug in all these cables. Okay guys, so when it comes to uh, doing these little things down here, so you've got, first thing we have to do is we've got to connect up all these little connectors. You can see there, power switch, hard drive LED, all that kind of stuff. So that's all your kind of front stuff in your computer, so your power button, your reset switch. Um, your hard drive, activity LED, all that stuff needs to be connected to this, these little pins here. So, and if you're having trouble actually getting those connected or knowing which ones go where, because it's very, it's written on the motherboard, but it's very, very small. You'll find it also on your motherboard manual. Uh, so right here, we've got panel. So you see there, it's got panel and it's got your hard drive LED. All that stuff is all labeled there so you can get those pin connectors in correctly. So anyway, once you've done that, I kind of skipped ahead of that because I'm, you know, it's going to be, it's very, very small and hard to show connecting those connectors. So before I actually go ahead and plug in all the power supply stuff, I need to go ahead and connect all of the, the front IO. So that's, you know, the USB ports in the front of the case. So yeah, mo mostly all that stuff connects to the bottom right here, so you can see. Um, hopefully it's not too dark for you guys, but what you can see is all the ports along the bottom. These are all basically for our connections from the front of the board. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and thread those through from the back and plug those all in. And then once they're all plugged in, um, then I'll move on to actually plugging in all the power connections that we need for the motherboard, so you know the the ATX power, the ATX 24 pin cable, and the CPU power. Okay guys, moving on to um, doing the SATA connections now. Um, I had a little look on the manual. It looks like they're all six gigabit per second SATA ports on the board. So I'm not sure if it really matters which ones I connect uh, the, which ones I connect the SATA cables to. So hopefully it's not gonna really matter which ones I connect them up to. So I'm just gonna connect them to these ones here cause it's closest to the drives. And it's closest to this where I can hide the cables away, so I'm just going to plug them into here. Okay, 
Okay, so now we've just got to power the hard drives. Got this um, SATA connection that's kind of like daisy chained all the these SATA connections in one. Because it's on one cable, it's just one connection to the power supply, which is pretty useful. Okay, and we have power. Okay, so that's pretty much everything. Um, I still got another SATA cable for the disk drive that needs to be connected and a SATA data cable for that. So I also threaded through the power for the graphics card. It takes two eight pins. So these are six pins that you can attach these two extra to make them eight pins. So two eight pins for the graphics card. And then that should be everything. Um, so yeah, all we got to do now connect up the disk drive and then try and install the AIO liquid cooler. Hmm, I need to figure out what configuration I'm going to have this in in the case because I could have it like top mounted like this but then I would have to somehow curl this around like that which if I have it like in the case like that with this on the top you can't the, the tubes are covering this you can't really see it so probably have it the other way around so have this in the top and then with the tubes coming down from this side and then so you got the Corsair logo like that surprising I thought it would be heavier if it was filled but it's very light but anyway I'll take their word that it's pre-filled I heard some liquid jiggling around in there so hopefully we're good so I'm just trying to get these these new LED fans so that I can mount them onto the radiator. Okay, so now we get to the point where we actually have to install the CPU block itself. Now the thing is, because this is a Broadwell e-build and it's using the socket 2011 V3, I think. Um, so because of that, luckily, I don't need to install the back plate. There's this little back plate that with the other motherboards you have to install. You adjust it for your socket and then you install it on the back of the board and screw the screws on top. You don't have to do that with LGA 2011 you, you because it's already got the mount point so all you have to do is take your little your little uh, standoff for the screw and just screw it in and there you go that's it so I've just got to do that with all the others the other three and then uh, then we can get this block installed basically Okay, so that's these four screwed on. So now we're gonna take the uh, plastic off. There's already thermal paste pre-applied there, so there's no need to install your own thermal compound on this unless there's a problem and we end up having to put this back on. The only thing that worries me about doing this is this is incredibly stiff. So I'm worried about, you know, bending this too much so it puts too much tension on it and we get leaks. Hopefully that doesn't happen though. But it's it's very it's very tense. Okay. So that that is mounted on there. Not very well. So once you get it placed down, you got these little thumb screws that you just screw on.
Right, so that is the CPU block installed, as far as I can tell. Um, it's a bit unfortunate, there's this massive, these two massive pipes that you can't really, there's, there's so much tension, you can't really, um, you know, try and move them so that they're not obstructing anything, but ah, it looks good, it looks good all together. So, now I've got to get the fan connections connected for these two LED fans, and then also, what else have we got? Got these two fans, and then there's the, the USB connection in this, plus all of these connections. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Um, so I've got the cables running along the top. I just need to make sure that I can get a SATA power cable to reach if that connector is even necessary. Okay, I got that SATA cable at the back plugged in, no problem. Okay, I think we're good then. I think we are actually, we're good on the CPU cooler block. Um, making sure that's tight. Yeah, I think we're okay. So, last but not least, graphics card installation then. And what we need to do, thread our power cables through for the graphics card. Okay, so graphics card installation time. And this is why, the other reason I wanted to keep this 980 Ti rather than upgrading to a 1070. The color scheme of this 980 Ti is perfect. Perfect black and white color scheme. And of course the Windforce logo as you saw at the start of the video lights up. You can set it to white as well. So I think that's gonna look really, really good in the black and white theme build. It's got a really nice back plate to it as well. So yeah, this is the GTX 980 Ti, Gigabyte G1 Gaming Edition. If I was going to go with a 1080, if I had the extra budget to get a 1080 and it was actually worth my time getting a 1080 if I had a better screen and stuff, maybe a 4K display. If you're trying to replicate this build but you want to use a, like a, get a 1080 or 1070, then I would recommend getting the EVGA for the win edition. Because the EVGA for the win edition is actually, um, it's not black and white but the logo lights up and you can set it to, or it lights up white or you can set it to white uh, which would fit with the build and it you would have a 1070 that would fit the build really nicely so here we go so there's kind of like a reinforced um pci express slot so we're going to connect it up to that one uh -huh. okay might be a bit of an obstruction here hopefully not too much of an issue. Okay, we're plugged in. And locked in place. So, just need to install the thumb screws and then we're we're pretty much good. pretty good only issue I can see is these are, co are kind of coming out and above the fans so maybe when I sit this back upright I might be able to sort of redirect these power cables so that they're not quite over that fan but other than that it looks fine that's everything installed so we've got the motherboard installed then the CPU the RAM the AIO cooler obviously the new power supply the graphics card all set up and installed, all the hard drives are connected, the DVD drives connected, everything's ready hopefully. So yeah, we're just gonna boot it up and see what happens.
Okay, so this is the moment of truth. I know it's very dark right now. The sun's going down. Um, but yeah, here we go. So... Oh. Well, we have lights on the PCI connections, which is pretty cool. Um, but... Well, at least that lets us know the motherboard isn't shorted out or anything. I think it lives. It lives. It's alive. Making some weird noises though. Well. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Which HDMI is it? HDMI 1. American Mega Trends. It's there. You can't see the monitor because it's behind the computer. But at least it's running. So now I've just got to connect the keyboard up and try and configure it and see see what's going on. Um, see if there's any issues that need to be resolved. But wow, I'm glad, I'm glad it's done. The other thing I'm going to do before I end the video is I'm going to connect the LED connector so that when I, so I'll put my panel on with the LEDs and have the LEDs connected to the actual motherboard as well. Um, so I don't have to use that weird like IR receiver thing with the remote that I was using before in the previous motherboard because it didn't have an RGB connection. So I'm going to connect the RGB LEDs and then show you what it looks like with all of that stuff on as well. Okay, so the very last thing is the RGB connection. So I am pretty lucky that it turns out that this motherboard has an RGB connection. I never knew it did when I ordered it. Um, it wasn't something I was looking for because I still had that kind of jerry-rigged set up with the Molex connector to allow me to use the LED strip anyway but it's nice that this has its own thing so I don't have to use that anymore I can control it with the software so you've got this cable that comes with the motherboard you just plug it into this little white one right here it says RGB header underneath on the board itself so you know that it's the correct one so then the end of the RGB cable just plugs into your actual LEDs themselves there's a little arrow usually that points in the right direction, I believe. Yeah, there's a little arrow on both sides, so make sure they're pointing towards each other, and then you know you've got them the right way around. And that's it, the LEDs are hooked up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the side panel on with the window so you get the LEDs and see what it looks like with the LEDs, and uh, see if I can boot up to, into Windows without having to reinstall the operating system, because I have replaced the entire motherboard so I'm not sure if it's going to boot into my Windows installation. I hope it does because I really can't be bothered reinstalling the operating system. Okay guys, so this is it. I've got the side, I've got the side panel on with all the LEDs. Everything's uh, connected and hooked up and working. You can see there I've got the white Windforce logo. All the LEDs on the, PC, on the PCB are white. And of course I've got the white LED fans, the white logo on the Corsair um, AIO cooler. So yeah, everything's worked out and I can change these LEDs to any other color I want. So, you know, the LEDs on the motherboard are fully RGB. The LEDs of this Windforce logo on the graphics card can be changed to a number of different colors. Same with the Corsair uh, logo on the AIO liquid cooler. The only thing I can't really change the color of or for LEDs is the fans. But, I mean, they're white, so, you know, they'll work with any color I change the other LEDs to anyway. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. I've got the whole thing together. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I did, first I should say if I ran into any problems when I first turned it on. When I first turned it on, as I showed you, it did post the first time and I could get into the BIOS. Um, but basically, what the kind of only issue I really, I'm really having right now is with the RAM. Now, I've got the RAM all detected and working, but I can only run it right now at 2400 megahertz. I can't run it at the full 3200 megahertz unless I, increase uh, RAM voltages or um, some other voltage. I can't remember what it's called yet. So I'm looking into doing that so I can increase the RAM speeds to its full 3200 megahertz um, if possible. Right now it's running at 2400 so hopefully I'll be able to do that by you know adjusting voltages and stuff. But yeah that's basically um, the whole thing built. Um, another issue I had is this fan was plugged into the wrong header on the motherboard. So it was running at 100% speed, which is why I said there's a weird noise, uh, which was just the fan running at 100% speed. So I've got it plugged into the correct header. The water pump's now connected to the header that was 
applying more voltage so that uh, it'll get more power for the pump. So that is basically, yeah, that's basically everything. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's not something I do on the channel very often is, you know, make PC builds or do PC builds, but um, it's something different and, you know, I don't get to do them very often. So when I get the chance, I like to make a video on it. So hope you enjoyed it anyway. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, comment if you have any questions, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.